आप सुन रहे हैं ग्राउंड ब्रेकिंग कम्युनिटी स्ट्रीम This is Q live and direct from the Psyche Lab Studio. We are finally back with our new series of podcasts after a months of hiatus working on variety of projects and inception of our new design studio. We had a nice ride for last one year publishing 18 episodes of talking and sharing creative journeys and processes. We are stoked to have a comeback with much more experiences and learning more consistently this time. We are on all the major music and podcast platform. Also consider checking us out on YouTube if you haven't already. If you have suggestions or feedbacks, you can shoot me a mail mentioned in the podcast description. For this episode, we have Sudhir Sharma, who is a founder of Indi Design based in Pune, India. He's also been a founder and an editor in chief at the Design India magazine which was founded in 2010. It was started as a platform for interaction for the design community in India and abroad. Over the years it has grown into a forum spread over many social and professional networking domains into a thought leading community. We'll be talking about his journey of founding multiple design companies and his journey of running a design magazine for more than a decade. Hi Sudhir, how's it going with you? Good, good. Everything good. Yeah I can see that you are uh, you are live from your home how's it, how's it going with you Yeah so Saturday is when I <clears throat> I try not to think of work uh, or the week uh, which is lying ahead I start thinking of that on Sunday so Sunday is like my Monday almost Saturday is like completely off Yeah so then no that- work Yeah I mean uh, so, uh, likewise in my case as well you know uh, so I mean uh, How how's it going with you? I I saw that you uh, you know you had a successful campaign at with with your festival. How how was it for you? And again, uh, uh, I think you you said bye to your magazine after twelve years of uh, you know publishing it out there. Yeah, so I I think almost on every front it is going very good, much better than expected, and definitely you know in last few years the. the environment had become very difficult covid and being at home and so we didn't know where things will move but they're moving much faster and in a much better direction so one is i we ran through uh, with the magazine during the covid but we didn't think we will stop it on 144th issue it just sort of you know happened that we realized that oh, 144th issue if if there is a time to stop it's now or we will uh, probably have to go on for some more time and i've been planning some other things with the magazine uh, and i need to focus on that so while running the magazine focusing on that uh, it almost becomes excuse not that you can't do it you can do it but it's just like no i'm doing this i'm busy with this i'm so i said okay let's close this and let's move on to something new so that cafe thing which you have read about <laughs> is the new thing which is happening uh, which is also unexpected started only uh, it's it's not even 6 months back we started thinking about it and has taken up momentum has taken up a definite shape uh, so going going great in terms of work at indie design it's it's super as well uh, certainly the kind of projects i didn't imagine i'll get to do in last 33 years of my career are i'm queuing up and aligning up so that is good and for the for the event which we had the design in their show we had the best ever crowd we had 250 people um, all professionals all heads of studios and and heads of businesses coming together and and discussing uh, awards was also the best ever participation uh, we've had in last so many years so i think uh, everything is going good looks very good and i hope uh, you know touch wood things keep going like that Yeah, I mean, all the best for that. I, uh, I mean, it was definitely uh, for for us designers, you know, for the people who are new in the creative business. Definitely, it has been an inspiring space. Where, you know, with the magazine, I still remember reading it uh, back when I was studying design. So definitely, you've done a lot of inspiring things, Sudhi. So I mean, let's let's just go a little, you know, a little back in your timeline. I mean, uh, 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 you you studied as a designer. 
So, I mean, you always wanted to become a designer when you were in school? No, actually, uh, you know, that's many years back. So, it's 33 years back I graduated. So, six years before that, that's 40. So, I would say about 44 years back. Wow. Uh, is when I when I heard the word design for the first time. And that also because we had a chapter by S. Balram, who's an industrial design teacher, who was at NID that time on on bullet card design. And I was so fascinated by this theory that you design a bullet card thinking about, you know, how the, the bull suffers, what he has to go through this. I think, can can you imagine something? Somebody is designing a bullet card thinking of the bull. And wow. then it's 45 years back, I'm, I'm saying, I was fascinated. So I said, my, we were in Jamnagar at that time. My uh, dad was uh, uh, doing a job in Jamnagar. We were there for some time. And so I sent my dad to Ahmedabad when he goes uh, next on his uh, trip to go and see what an idea is. So he brought back one very small uh, leaflet from there saying beautiful campus, very nice place and, uh, you know, very happy kids talking to everyone, laughing. And So I said, I, I wanted to go there. <laughs> you know, that's the place. I didn't know what design was. But we went and found out we, we had Digjam Mill right next door. Uh, so we found out there is somebody called a designer in Digjam Mill. So we went to see him and we asked him if, uh, like all parents have, you know, if he becomes a designer, will he get a job? That was the first question. Because they were hell-bent on me either taking medicine or taking uh, engineering. And I was very good in my studies. So this, uh, that guy saying, are you joking? If he goes to NID, uh, I'll give him a job. But he'll never come to Jamnagar then. You know, everybody who goes to NID goes to Delhi or Bombay or they'll go abroad and they never come back to small cities. Oh, so was it the it case? Like, uh, yeah, was it the yeah. case back then? Okay, that 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 was the case. That was the case. So, in fact, the only design jobs were available in in Bombay in advertising agencies, um, or in Delhi uh, exhibitions, very large scale exhibitions which were happening that day. And also that time there were no no design companies in India. You see, I'm talking about forty years back. You know, I'm talking yeah. about thirty five years back. Um, there were no design companies. In fact, the time we were graduating, there were two design companies, which or three probably, which got a little known. One was uh, a, a company by uh, Amarjeet Behel, my senior, um, who did very large pavilions, Discovery of India and all that in, in Russia and all that. So he was based in Delhi. Uh, another was uh, a group in Bangalore, uh, doing industrial design and, and beautiful work. Uh, I think they were uh, about a few years senior to us. And then about the time we left or we were leaving is Sujata Keshwan setting up her setup in Bangalore. So there were not, uh, there were not much you could in get inspired by, uh, right? Uh, in fact, for us to think of starting a design company itself was a <laughs> anomaly at that time. Uh, there was not much case studies saying design is needed in India, design pays in India uh, at that moment. So how did it? How did that happen to you when you uh, you know started uh, uh, Elephant Design with your with your friends? And was yeah. it something that so you we, planned in, in your college time while you were graduating? Yeah. yeah. So one thing is I was um, highly insecure always that I will not get a job. Um, in fact, I had not known, you know, who gets a job as a designer. So I knew a few people who joined Philips or Tata Motors, my seniors, or a lot of them will end up at uh, advertising agencies. But we used to have very good uh, magazines in our uh, uh, resource center. <clears throat> There's a magazine called ID, uh, not interactive design. It, it was ID, industrial design. There was no interactive design at that time, right? There were no computers that time, no more mobile phones. So uh, on the last page of uh, that magazine, there used to be an advertisement of a very abstract picture of a product. So for example, if this is a mouse, this will probably be this corner of the mouse and that whole page tinted in blue. And, and at the bottom, there will be a very nice sketch, little sketch of a um, animal of a frog and it'll say frog design next to it. That's it. There's no concept of URLs that time. There are no websites. Yeah. Right? And I, I was so fascinated uh, with that. And then sometimes they'll have people and they'll say frog junior and frog senior. And frog junior talking to frog senior. And frogs having fun. So people having fun. 
so i i sort of i was very inspired by by prop design how prop design was doing extremely serious work uh, and and they were being lauded by it uh, in media of that time design media whatever was available uh, and they were having a lot of fun so i thought this is what i want to do i want to have a lot of fun and i want to do design with this extremely serious work with matters to people right and that's been my philosophy till now enjoy yourself do do extremely serious work which which you know will benefit people but it's enjoy yourself to the extreme so i i um, got together we were doing a course called uh, uh, professional procedures which later became design management in fact i'm running that course in nid now so um, um <clears throat> and and there you had to um, form a fake company and propose a fake proposal this was uh, to learn how to make proposals to the clients right so when this was happening i got together with a few batchmates and i said why not let's take it seriously uh, let's seriously go ahead and and uh, you know form a company and we did so we we uh, which started as exercise we formed a company at that time a few of us i think there were initially there were just one two three of us then fourth joined then fifth joined uh much later six joined so there were six of us uh, in elephant and we called it elephant design uh i called it elephant design basically because of frog design i thought uh, what is the frog equivalent of because frog is very well known in 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 uh, eslingers area in germany in that you know wet swampy area what is is like that in india and i thought it was elephant because um everybody knows what an elephant is even if you don't see one every day um you know the elephant is is present everywhere such a vivid memory you have of elephant you do think of india when you think of elephant it moves very slow uh but it moves very steadily very stable and when elephant is there on the road everybody sort of notices it right so i thought that uh, as as very young aspiring kids was extremely uh, ego tilting for us Uh, to have a name like that we got beaten for <laughs> for the name a lot uh, but i thought that also became one of the largest assets for for that company so elephant was born in 1989 um uh, on campus 1988 when we were doing that course and i think we formalized the structure in 1989 as a partnership first and sometime in 92 to 95 sometime we converted that into a private limited Okay, so I mean, uh, you were just out of college, dude. You had uh, uh, an idea about okay, how are we gonna, you know? Because again, it was not something which was very design oriented. It was you know very business oriented. So I mean, uh, and how how was the market in early nineties? I'm just curious about that because because again, still there are a lot of uh, you know design studios and agencies, but at the same same time, we are also evolving, you know, uh, uh, in, in design as a country. So how was it back then in the nineties? I, I I don't think it was very different, except that there were very few designers. There were not many designers, uh, but then nobody knew about design as well. Nobody needed designers, right? So uh, for a very long time, I think till recently, there was a very large conflict between advertising agencies and uh, design companies. So a lot of work which designers do today was done by advertising companies, logos, identities, exhibitions. even product design was handled by advertising agencies right any creative work which needed to be done was done by so so for us it was like we combined our our uh, pre-dip uh, portfolios so six of us you can imagine uh, you know one portfolio used to be this thick so we had such, such a thick portfolio converted that onto a, a slide uh, show and started approaching uh, the the companies based in uh, pune uh because we landed up in in pune first um and frankly the kind of jobs we were looking at were calendar design exhibition design logo design stationery design uh though we had the product designer with us there were no product design jobs for quite some time product design jobs came in much much later uh <clears throat> so we were we were open to do anything at at that time and we were very young uh, there were not much needs uh there were in fact even computers were not there so all you needed was a artboard uh, which we had in the school and pens and sketches and colors which we already had 
uh, you know, this this investment in in uh, opening office came in much later. <laughs> that's that's around ninety six, ninety eight is when the computers actually landed up. Uh, before that, there was no nothing really needed. You could just all you need is furniture, and and start working on it. Um, so initially, uh, jobs came in through family, uh, family friends. So one of my partners, uh, aunt. Uh, was a corporate communication head with the company, so she landed up giving us the first project. Um, her company's parent company in Germany landed up giving us a project in Germany, uh, which was uh, at that time hundred thousand Deutsche Marks. Uh, which, if you do the calculation on Google today, in today's would be about four crore worth. So that means even today, if somebody gets a job like that, is is worth it. And that was a calendar and um, a film uh, and a brochure. No, I think it was a it was a brochure and a, a calendar for a German company. We had no idea how to charge for it, so we left it to that company, and they said we'll pay you what we pay a German designer, which even today is <laughs> not the right uh, this thing. But we landed up getting a lot of money wow. very early. In the sense, we we really didn't have to struggle uh, because we were earning in Deutsche Marks. There was no euro at that time. We landed up getting a phone. A phone used to be a huge. Uh, there, there used to be a huge waiting time to get a phone. Um, it used to take six years or seven years to get a phone. So we got our phone very quickly. Um, we got respect from our bank very quickly because we were the first foreign um, uh, currency account with our with our bank at that time. Our CA got very happy. A lot of people around suddenly very young kids, but. Imagine Germany, me come करने, you know yeah. that. Uh, also, I think a certain attitude came in that we didn't really need to look for work. So uh, we could do two things: we could sit back and let the right work come to us and and do that work, or go and approach the work which we wanted. Uh, that what that meant was that we could actually say no to the standard kind of work or the work which did not excite us. Uh, and we did a, a lot of that. We were we were very very arrogant in terms of the kind of work we will uh, pick and choose and do. And I think that made all the difference because uh, there was a vision in terms of doing projects which were not done earlier. Uh, you know, so so breaking new grounds, breaking new kinds of projects, and and we could sort of sense that these are the projects which needed to be done. Uh, there was enough time to learn because we were earning well. There was enough time to learn. We didn't have to sort of get rushed into project to project to project, and there's no time to. We could look abroad. We could look at what companies were doing outside. We had the chance very early on to 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 start networking with people, traveling out, meeting. In fact, I met David Kelly, uh, who later formed the IBO in uh, Seoul around the time he was forming the IBO, and we landed up discussing what. Uh, design can do to the world. We landed up meeting. I mean, you name it, the kind of people we we met at that time who were all and and we realized that it wasn't just that design was new to India. The design was new to the whole world. It wasn't just new to India. So in that sense, design as designers, we are at the cutting edge of any profession. If you say automobile making, it came into India much later. Right. If you look at engineering capability, all that came in much later. But design is probably around the same time uh, when it was happening in the world. Oh, I mean, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, sounds uh, really exciting. Uh, so, what, what, you know, for, for at what stage you realized that you you needed, uh, uh, you know, you uh, at what stage you realized that you had to start in redesign, and what was the maybe core reasons behind behind doing that. No, I I actually had no no reason to start in design. For me, elephant was life, right? So I didn't really think beyond elephant design at all. In fact, I <clears throat> we started in 1989, and in in 2009 uh, is when I had to leave uh, elephant. So almost those those 20 years, I had no um, no other thought in my mind that I would ever be working. Uh, you know, somewhere else, um, and and much later, of course, I have a lot of philosophies. I, I believe that what you do in the first five years uh, of your life or first fifteen years uh, accomplishment 
is the only accomplishments you have. You then later in your life you just live on those. You you build those and you live on those and you, you know. So so I thought um, I was very acutely aware that for me the prime time had gone at twelve. It was there, right? And then we had a disagreement uh, between partners, and and there was, um, you know, just so that I had to leave. Um, um, I didn't see um, myself existing in in that place and growing anymore. Uh, so I thought um, I would part ways, and I went ahead. So the the thought of starting Elephant Design was never uh, in indie design was never there. It's it's like I I left Elephant and I didn't know what I would do next. Uh, in fact, I was quite uh, in my mind. I was clear that I didn't want to work again. I did not want to uh, start a company because I had gone through building a company and then you know taking it somewhere. And there's a lot of fatigue in that. Um, I did explore at that time uh, working for some international companies. Lot of I landed up meeting again a lot of iconic people, Valley Islands and and the chairman of uh, WPP and Inter uh, Interbrand and all that who were looking at India as a very uh, lucrative place. But at the same time, I wasn't keen on on shifting from Pune also. So one of my uh, friends, very close architect uh, friends, Christopher Benninga. Who lives in Pune? He's American. Lives in Pune and has a lovely place, a very beautiful uh, place called India House. And he said, "Sudeep, uh, just start, uh, you know, coming and sitting uh, in my place, and my people will learn something from you." So I thought I was getting too depressed, <laughs> not doing anything. So I started doing that, and and then I realized that if if you look at something and if you're used to working on new ideas, you can't hold yourself back. And I had. All my clients calling up saying, "We have to do this. We have to do this. You know, let's move. Let's let's do something." So I landed up uh, starting to work again, and I I formed and I called this company uh, Indie Design because uh, that building was called uh, India House, right? So <laughs> that name came in much later, uh, and within a year, uh, Indie Design had outgrown the place which Christopher had given us, so I had to move out. Into a, a rented place, and next few years we bought our own place and moved into our own studio, and we have a lovely studio right next to a hill where in in monsoons you see a lot of waterfalls and all uh, happening. Yeah, and the story continues. Yeah, I mean, so what? Uh, I mean, as you mentioned that you already had an experience of you know starting uh, a company, starting business. Then so when you were doing this, uh, the same thing with indie design, was it was it like okay, you knew the formulas, or or there were some things that you had to go through? Um, I I think starting a design company is slightly different because we we are essentially not business people, right? We we are uh, we care for what we do and how we do it. That's very essential. So, but having spent twenty years um, with some of the largest names in the industry, also meant that uh, if I just said yes, finances is not something which I need to worry about, right? It's the my worry was something else. That at Elephant I had a very well oiled, very uh, good team, uh, very senior team, people I could trust, right? My partners and and lot of other people, and I suddenly had. Uh, to build a new team completely out of young people, uh, and and needed to trust them with with work, which is like um, life and death for clients <laughs> always. So so that uh, and and I I realized that that is is a so earlier when we built Elephant, that process was organic. That happened by it's that we had time, we were young, it happened. Next time, it was a realization that okay, I cannot start unless I have this, this, this. So next time, it was the experience, not really the organic uh, this thing, right? So I knew the profiles I was looking for. I knew the kind of people I needed to work with. Um, <clears throat> also, because it was a new company, I I was very keen to work, work with young, fresh uh, people, and I I was extremely fortunate that I had a good network. Um, you know, I had. Created a network called Design India earlier in 2003, uh, so was connected to a lot of designers. Uh, so that was not an issue. I, I could quickly put up a team and, and start with that. 
All right. So do so do you think that that uh, because of that network you you managed to you know start a magazine and what what was the main objective behind creating that magazine? Okay. So magazine was uh, it it was always on my mind for many years that we should have a design magazine in India, but I didn't really get into this till two thousand and ten. Um, I was a part of India Design Council um, at that time. and um, one of the mandates of india design council is to promote design and designers in india and i thought uh, it made sense that we have a publication on design the india design council has a publication on design so i made a proposal to the india design council and like everything else i do i i work a lot on on the strategy first then i i work a lot in terms of what the operations would be what the execution would be how it would be financed and how uh the staffing would be so i basically you know make a whole project like i do for my clients and and take it that that there are no loopholes and when um, anand mahindra was the president that time uh, chairman of the council so he went through the whole thing and so the it's so well formed that why don't you just start running it because if if council gets into this uh, he said i'm not sure if council is the right editorial board uh, for the magazine and i was i was uh, like okay and and i had friends in industry who were ready to support it the story is there in the in that magazine if you read so i got back to them saying this is how we'll run the magazine i didn't really want this to be supported by advertising so th- this was a magazine not supported by uh, the advertising i created content in a different way i said nobody would actually interview people and write content people have to write their own stories uh, it will not be focusing on one project or projects of design it will always focus on people designers because designers are always larger than the projects they do right the project you do is one but the designer if he's consistent would actually do 10 of those projects so so always focus on designers so designer would always be on the cover so we we worked in a so this was a magazine which is a very different it's a very well designed uh, conceived magazine not in terms of visual design but also in terms of the the process it would be uh, also the economics which we worked out uh, behind it uh, so the whole process was very interesting and once i rolled it up i i also said that i'm not going to be a, a typical publisher in the sense that once i have decided i'm not going to change my views i said we will learn it on the way so every magazine we made changes whether they were uh, editorial changes content changes or the way we talk to people or what we talked about or on the way we discovered that uh, it was good idea to have designers on the cover to have designers inside to to you know have them uh, give their story uh, and i was keen that if i do this once in 6 months or once in 2 months or once in a year people will forget about it uh, you know you don't take it seriously uh, if i i i wish i had the energy to put out a newspaper on design i would have done it every day there, there's so much content but uh, i said one month let's do it monthly so I, we fix the amount of content we will have the content has remained uh, the the amount of information is same from the first issue till the last issue we kept changing the format and size and paper and printing and all that so uh, we fixed the content and we said month after month we will print it out so there were times that till two two days before the magazine had to go in print and we didn't have a cover uh, we didn't or uh, somebody story would pull out because uh, didn't get permission from their company or suddenly there are issues i mean obviously 144 issues you have a lot of those stories uh, yeah. <laughs> extremely interesting stories yeah so you had a constant But, you had a constant team who were working on the on the magazine or uh, it was a team who were also working on the projects and and the magazine at the same time okay so other thing was that uh, when i started in the design and 2009 i didn't have too many projects i didn't have too much work i had uh, but i needed to have experts with me so i had people who were experts in in layouts quark express or adobe uh, that time right i had people who were very good in thinking content but i didn't have enough work for them to to be occupied all the time so so this was our downtime activity so i thought okay you spend 5 days on the magazine uh, we literally spent only 5 days uh, per issue we don't spend more than 5 days per issue okay so we spend those 5 days we spend together 
looking at various uh, number of people and and their content and what that is and plan for next two months uh, two months end but it was the same team we never had a separate team um, and that's strange because a lot of people have not heard of indie design but they've heard of the magazine of course yeah. and they come looking and when they come in pune they actually come to to see the magazine staff and then they see the magazine staff is actually busy on on real projects <laughs> branding projects and film projects and architecture projects so but uh, it it did a lot of good to my team because my team started appreciating other people's work which i think is a huge uh, and especially as a young designer if you can uh, take out that element of jealousy which you have by looking at others work and say ah i wish i could have done that um, not in a positive way you know or my studio should be earning that much uh, that kind of this thing and leave all that aside and say oh beautiful work this guy has done really such, such beautiful work and then you look projects after projects you know, this guy is that this guy is a genius even though he's very young or you know he's really done so those things are, are something which really uh, make you feel so good so we started discussing designers in extremely positive uh, way discussing their work in a positive way which continues in my office so even now every day somebody would come up and say did you see this did you see that did you see that so and with social media that that thing has just exploded now but it's it's a damn good interaction uh, which we have Uh, i'm sure i mean managing projects and working on the magazine at the same time you know uh, same thing working on on these two things can definitely be difficult so you were i mean were you a person who was really great with organization or you had you know maybe some autopilot modes that you prepared for yourself no i i think it's i i have a great team that that i would say that the team is fantastic and extremely excited so i i think uh, when you're doing something you really want to do you don't see that as a work so while we were working um, and also i think at the same time we knew that this is our own operation right um, so priority was always to the professional projects like during uh, two months in in the year when my office is actually busy designing annual reports which are uh, time sensitive and to the clients we have been designing annual reports for last 20 years i i had to give priority to that and during those two months the magazine gets late uh, and we start getting messages from subscribers hey magazine nahi aaya kya hai yeah it's coming it's coming so it's okay you know it, it just uh, it happens a few days here and there um, but we, it was always counted into our uh, our schedule so people were excited we were excited uh, doing the magazine we like i told you the work i mean it's still the same thing you have to be extremely excited uh, to do the work otherwise not do the work not not the routine kind of work so on both the levels you actually don't feel the amount of time you are working and frankly there is a lot of time which we waste i i see that even today i think 24 hours is a huge amount of time really you know i'm i'm sure i could do 15 other things <laughs> as well Yeah I I mean uh, definitely we have become more distracted than ever you know cause uh, there there are maybe 10 other things which were maybe not there 10 years ago and mm-hmm. also the the our attention span has become you know uh, maybe you no know, not the best uh so at at what stage you realize that okay maybe we we should start uh, uh, you know a award uh, space where we are giving awards for agencies and ind- individual projects so um again few triggers for that i <clears throat> started seeing that uh, there are some publications which give out the uh, you know the designer of the year award or design team of the year award or design office the or best design officers award and that's like crazy these guys have no xyz knowledge of what design is so how they give those awards is very crazy they ask their uh, editor editor speaks to few clients and they decide there's no jury there's there's no transparency even now they they still continue this and the impact it has on the studio is fantastic um i know this because my studio has got a lot of these awards right so <clears throat> fantastic in the sense the impact it has on your clients is uh, fantastic one is awards are needed to 
as as a marketing tool for us. There are not many marketing tools which we have as designers, you know, to to say I'm better than the other one, uh, and and on a parameter that the client will understand. So parameter of awards is something which is understood universally. So I was sure that uh, you know it should be a award given out by designers, given out by a design magazine. Uh, by then, I think uh, Pool Magazine, Design India was getting a very good uh, reputation in the market. And if I could, um, uh, you know, get together a jury which was a very serious, reputed, respected jury, I was very sure that uh, we will be able to do it. At the same time, I was jury on Cannes, I was jury on Ad Asia, I was jury on Dutch Design Awards, Design Turkey, IXDA New York, on on rebrand. So I was I was on on tons of juries around the world, and I knew exactly how this thing works. I was also a part of the organizing team of IF in Germany. So I've been, uh, I used to go to Germany uh, twice a year, in Asia two, three times a year, and we have a meeting to discuss, you know, what the categories would be, how would we, this is a German award I'm talking about. And and looking at that, I realized that there is, there's a reason you need to do good awards, uh, okay? But at the same time, these are not, uh, you're not doing a social work, right? You are you are putting a tool in people's hand which they will use as a marketing tool and and go ahead and and uh, you know further their abilities to be a designer to to earn more to get more uh, attractive. So I I made it right from the beginning that these are not awards which will be done free. You have to enter to to get these awards. Uh, and and um, another thing which I decided early on was. Uh, the awards, I won't have student getting. I, I really, uh, from the bottom of my, of my heart, I, I really don't like the concept of students competing uh, for awards. I think students should learn, right? They should become professionals and then com- compete in the real uh, world. At that moment, gratification of an award is something which can kill your career. You know, very early in life, you, you become, in your head, you become a designer the moment you graduate. And actually, it takes a few years uh, for you to become a designer. So you actually do not know how to deal with that next few years after winning awards. So I said, no students, only professionals. Uh, that uh, very soon we realized that awards got extremely popular in the sense, uh, the moment we launched it, uh, you know, uh, lovely response on it. Uh, people wanted to come and collect their trophies. So the first year we did the award, we said, we won't have trophies. We will have only digital trophies. So like what we call NFT today. So we created NFTs and, and sent people saying, that's your award. But even then people would say, no, I want my real award, actual something which I can hold. So we really had to do a rethink next year and said, okay, there's a value in, in getting an award and getting a picture done. So award has a value. The larger value is to receive the award from a from somebody. So to have that picture. Today I realized the, the there is another level of higher value is to make a video about that and put it on your social media. So winning award is not enough. Getting award is not enough. It's it's getting that video done and put it. Even that is not enough. You need to have likes on that then. You know, so it's like it's like levels of gratification which is which is happening. So people were coming to the event. It was a one day event. I thought professional people really don't have more than one day. I don't have patience to attend a conference which is three days or two days, I can attend a one day, I can force myself to sit in an auditorium to listen uh, about what I already know for not more than one day. I don't have that patience. So I said, okay, one day people can fly in, fly out. These are busy people, Friday, so that their companies pay for their coming, going, staying, all that. It's a working day for them. They And then there's a weekend. So they feel like they can hang around. Pune is a beautiful place. Uh, So we decided to do a one-year event, two years after the awards. Okay, a one-day event. So, so people come in and we, you know, uh, spend a good amount of money. And I realized again that a uh, lot of our clients actually backed us up, like they had backed us on on the magazine. Uh, and fantastic result. We could get about hundred and fifty people together uh, and and do uh, very cozy, uh, intimate discussions. Uh, and most of these discussions were not on design. So it's it's very strange when you see uh, professionals together uh, and there are no students around, they don't talk about design. They don't try and teach design to each other, right? Because they know everybody knows design. So you then talk about 
issues of design which you are actually facing in your practice uh, it could be business it could be taxes it could be getting clients it could be how to deal with the client and, and things like that i really love that interaction i thought this is what will push our industry ahead so so i made it uh, very clear that in, even in our event we don't want students <laughs> we want only professionals so this year uh, we did a offline event after 2 years and we had 250 people um again uh, another milestone which i saw is that now it's not only designers who are interested in activities like this is the business heads who are interested as well because they need uh, right information they need to know more about design so so we had uh, this year 250 people they were designers design heads of the studios um, we had the uh, uh, business heads of companies we had investors we had fund managers uh you know and i was like asking them why would you want to attend a design event and they saying you know how many every designer works with so many startups uh, that they the designer is like a hub so we can get access to all those people and i thought well, what a fantastic uh, growth of the industry right where the other people are looking at designers as as a hub for networking you know you could actually connect people connect businesses together and and we i'm i'm already seeing this in action so so fantastic response uh, this year which is uh, actually uh, it's we are mind blown we were ready for 150 people and we landed up having uh, 250 people wow me uh, that's uh, i mean that's definitely uh, you know i mean very impactful the, the kind you know the maybe the kind of space it creates when a, a number of professionals under one roof sharing ideas uh, and i mean again you are it's not just a space where people are getting awards it's also a space where people are collaborating you know there are possible collaborations they are you know um, you know sharing of projects you know maybe taking information from each other learning about the processes i mean i i would love to be be around that space uh, maybe the next time you are you're doing that uh while you were doing this i mean while you as you mentioned that you know uh, you you uh, found a space where you maybe uh, you, you can maybe build something you were giving awards at and how did it affect your agency how did it affect your company and even the magazine when you when you maybe started giving awards so um it did i think for the magazine it did very well because uh you know we are always looking for new designers new work um you need to meet a lot of people and uh, by nature we don't go we just interview people on email or phone uh, so a lot of people we cover in our magazine we have never seen we have never met them right so so this was weird uh, for me because i come from the old school of publication where photographers actually go and and meet people and take pictures we we rely completely on on people to write their own stories and their own pictures with all ndas and all uh, confidentiality and iprs and everything in place but still there, there was this element that we were not meeting enough designers we were not meeting newer designers right so the award opened that up completely because getting to to know maybe 500 new people in every year and people you have not known about and and they sending you their work which is fantastic you know irrespective that not every time the jury agrees that this work is good or bad but you can have your own personal feeling now, i like this work even if the jury didn't give the award so i could go back to that guy and say can i see more of your work can can i feature you sometime so this started happening about 6 years back uh, which uh, I, which i think gave us a new life in terms of uh, you know <clears throat> suddenly from us looking for people and work all the time we started having people sending us their work okay sending their work for awards and also sending their work as such so our, our, my email is still always full on on an average per day about 20 20 25 emails with portfolio saying i have been doing this for 10 years 15 years look at my work is there any possibility that i get featured so i i love that i get to see meet a lot of people uh, with the event we actually landed up meeting people okay and then we realized that a lot of those people became designers after we started publishing the magazine so so right it it's it's a circle by itself you know people saying oh we were so inspired and my father brought this magazine and i decided to become a designer and this, this, i spoke to you and 
in in 2011 do you remember you know i'm saying my god it's it's such a such a nice feeling so of course it it did wonders for <clears throat> on the content side of of the magazine uh, the content side for design india uh, to get the community together more people get to know us more people we get to know it did something crazy uh, for my design practice you know uh, which is <clears throat> i still need to figure out how uh, how do i deal with it because uh, the the event takes away about two months of my my professional time right the the time we put um, now of course we we have pockets we have templates ready so which we run through the year we know how uh, we could do it but award is funny because you need to book say when you one year in advance okay and you're looking at expenses say something like 30 35 lakhs is what you need to book uh, right up front and say you're not sure if you're going to get that much uh, back right and and then every time uh, i have this chalo chodo is bar let's why should we take this and headache let's not do it then people start calling you you know when is it this year you know can i come can i not come i mean all those things start happening and and many times you are in meetings and you are actually focused on delivering it we had a project going on in africa this thing uh, execution is happening and at the same time we had this uh, event organization also happening and is the same team uh, <laughs> there is no extra team on that but then i realized that's that's okay i think it's, it's the same principle again people love doing it is like a annual day for my team uh, everybody from my office gets to go on stage and give out a a plaque to the speaker they they love to do that they get a day to actually wear a coat it's a formal event by the way you have to wear a formal uh, dress right so this is once a year <clears throat> formal dress you you wear and get on the stage and go there we all enjoy it just like you enjoy an annual day in the school so i thought whatever the price is let's go ahead and do it so so it's extremely uh, enjoyable beneficial learning and of course you land up doing networking at a very different scale altogether yeah i mean uh, makes sense for sure um i again uh, there some a so few months back uh, there was a uh, you know the uh, again we had a conversation about this and you said that i you do, didn't have did not have any idea about about this so a lot of people were you know ranting about how design award works and maybe you know a lot of people uh, gets design awards who are maybe not deserving and because of that they they get project and we don't get the project because we don't have the design award so how do you think that again in the right now in 2022 there are a plethora of information out there you know you have enough space uh, you have to be on all the platforms you have to have your website reaching out cold calling stuff like that so how how do you think that you know uh, how how do you think that the awards are are important or or do you think that it it's may it maybe doesn't matter if you uh, you know if you, if you don't maybe need that kind of validation how how do you think award makes uh, makes an impact i i think in in our uh situation in our context uh, in india uh, awards are extremely important okay irrespective of the way that they are given by vested interest they are given by publications who have no clue they are given by organizations institutions uh, people whatever whoever gives you are giving a identity to a person okay and that person is going to use that identity see remember that design <clears throat> for normal people um uh, there is no way to validate if one designer is better than the other designer and we we don't have any matrix to understand or make people understand what and how should they choose a design or a designer or a design company we don't have that so in in absence of that the the only way there are few ways uh, in in which people take a decision with whom they want to work professionally i'm talking about not not uh, for students so it's like um, uh if i'm a large engineering company looking to do rebranding for example and i would actually what would i do i would look at five of my competitors have got their rebranding done and i will check which are the companies with their rebranding was done so the first point of validation is uh whom have you worked for your client list is your validation right if you work for bajaj if you work for icici you work with uh, for for uh, tesla you work for apple you work for google that's a, a a validation you have and you put it out to the client saying listen i work for these guys 
if they are happy with my work you'll be happy with my work right so that's first point second is what else I, and and very soon you have these people uh, almost every designer has worked with one company or the other which is good company right clients by themselves cannot judge your work so i know this uh, a lot of times we also say that judge us by our work frankly clients have no capability of judging the work right they don't know and many times they worry it's not the work they are worried about it's a, it's the professionalism of the person they are worried about you know whether you have enough team do you have enough uh, iprs on your hand do, are you using licensed software do you know the processes will you be able to handle our work or not right that is their worry what certifies or who does who certifies that at all so awards become yet another tool of bringing that confidence into the clients and customers saying i am the right person you should work with right so so i feel most of the time um, in these discussions where people say um, awards are not good uh, or or whatever reason i think one uh, there's no blanket like that obviously some awards are not good some awards are good but most of the time this is given by by the people who feel more entitled uh, and and they probably are scared that they will not win the award uh, so i had this uh, many years back when i started the awards a lot of senior people senior i would say my generation and maybe uh, a few years junior to me they uh, stood up very much against like who the hell are you to give the awards <laughs> right who who are you to give the award and and uh, uh, how do you know about design more than i know about design so my work speaks for myself who the hell are you which i i completely uh, understand but i think there was a fear behind that uh, language there's a fear that you know i am very reputed in the market when there is no validation there's no award system there's no certification and i am known because of my age you know it's just that in in my past i have worked i created brand for icici i created but brand for bajaj for standard charter for vankies for this for that uh, and it it is a matter of me being at the right time at the right place uh i'm not saying that that is because i'm a exceptional designer uh i i don't need your award right or if i enter your award chances are that your jury may not give me the award so all my that that many years uh, mehnat will go into the water people were scared so so i i i i feel that even now a lot of people uh, uh right back if they don't get award very angry uh, very sore and and i always tell them that please don't take it to the heart you know award is is just like getting a project it is to be on the right time at the right place with the right you know right kind of jury so uh, a, a jury uh, normally our jury is five people uh, per project uh, and if this five people have not given you the award and chances are that it's probably one person who said i won't give it a award and the other uh, you know were it's by one vote you actually lose the award chances are that next time it's a different jury and they might land up giving you the work so i don't think you should you should decide it is it is a sign of uh, you know how good or how bad you are uh, but entering award is important because you keep evaluating yourself and you have to uh, be at it uh, not lose heart on that right so what that means is you need to push yourself to a state that most of the jury should be unanimous saying yaar ye to acha kaam hai dilai padega and i'm i'm telling you that most of the people who get the award more or less are are like this only they they get award because the jury is unanimous on on their decision yeah makes sense uh, and and do do you think that you are playing again important role in terms of you know identifying uh, you know the winners for example and and how, and what are the processes that okay as as you mentioned that there's a there's a there's a you know de- a, a big team of jury members and you know uh, how how you uh, you know we get people uh, who send you design and and about them so do you have a process of you know identifying good and bad design or 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 for example if if a, if a person like me who has a new design agency and wants to apply you know uh, to to that design award what are the things maybe i i should keep in mind yeah so uh, no i don't have a control over that we have uh, like 
the entries are into various categories, right? So we will have for every project. So we have about 20 to 25 people as our jury panel. Okay. Uh, but each project doesn't go to 25 people to judge. Each project goes to five people to judge. And that's, there's a reason why the number is odd, right? Um, and out of those five people, three people are subject experts. Uh, and I'm moving more and more to professors for this, uh, for uh, professional reasons that this jury has to be well-known professors, design professors, right? So they they know what is the past, what is the future, what are the technical problems, technical errors, and they actually don't know the, many times they're not bothered about what happened to the project and how the project was done. They're not really bothered about the process, right? It's the outcome uh, which they're bothered about. We have one person who's an expert from a different domain altogether. So he could be, for example, if it's a branding project, this one jury could be an uh, architecture expert. Uh, okay. And there could be, there would be one person who's either from a very different field, either a lawyer or an industrialist or a business person or a management uh, guy who will have a normal person's perspective on that. Right. So, so these people, then, then they, and, and they're all, uh, they're not unknown people. They're known people. They they have been through, um, you know, they put in 10 years, 15 years um, into design. And they have this instinct when they look at a project and say, yeah, as a thought in design. Somebody would say, somebody say, oh, wow, this person done differently, right? So so we have this uh, a category of, they will say, I'll give this person a what? I will not give this person a what? And I have a brief for every jury saying, uh, when you are giving a award, to a person, it's a value judgment on, on yourself. And also that you need to make error on the positive side, not on the negative side. So if you're in a doubt, should I give award or not give award, then give award. Because it, it has a huge meaning for the person who receives it. Okay. Instead of saying, no, I am very strict and I am I will not. I In fact, I had a jury this time who didn't give a single award. Uh, on all the number of projects, 25 projects he judged and he just simply called me and said, Trash work, very bad. This, 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 and I'm saying, boss, you know, this sort of reflects how you look at other people's work. Okay, and I had, uh, on the other hand, I had a jury giving awards left, right, and center. So I had to speak to them also, saying, boss, what are you doing? What is it that you need? Right. So, so that happens. So each project goes to this this very diverse kind of juries. They get back. We get to know just before trophies are made. Uh, the collation is done and we know, uh, you know, uh, who's getting the award, who's not getting the award. I really have no control uh, in that. Um, I This is a process I learned from other juries that um, if, the, the, if you have vision for the awards to be long term and should be respected as the industry, this thing is better to be extremely impartial in that. So even if... Uh, a lot of my competitors enter, right? So finally, it's a funny thing. People keep saying that I've always had my competitors on the cover of the magazine, uh, right? Uh, and I send magazines to my clients, by the way. All my clients were the sponsors at, at the event and they met all my competitors there there also. So I'm saying, look, and, and it is funny that, that I need insane amount of confidence into my clients uh, and what I'm doing uh, to sort of go ahead with this. Forget that. I had um, a guy who got drunk at, at this time's event and pitching to my client in front of uh, my team saying, we will, your work is, you know, what you're doing is trash. I'll make it much better. And I'm saying, boss, these things are bound to happen. And my client is saying, yeah, but what he was saying wasn't completely wrong. We need to change the, the way we work. And I'm, I'm glad that somebody's come up and said that. Right? It's, it's, I think it's, it's, it gives us a different kind of confidence. It gives winners a different kind of confidence. It give, gives jury a very different kind of confidence as well. Also, uh, we keep in touch with the new things which are happening. You know, the new emerging fields with, within design. Uh, UX, UI, for example, extremely difficult to judge. I still have, I do not have a way uh, of how do you actually get jury to decide on those projects. Uh, on top of that, a lot of companies are and they say we will enter the awards. Uh, we may win the award. We will announce that we win, we win the award, but we won't want our work to be published at all. 
we don't want uh, it's under confidentiality we'll give it to the jury but we don't want this in your book i fi- finally publish a hardbound book right so it it's becoming more and more uh, issue uh, you know what how do you deal with those things that you will win an award it will go out saying so and so won the award but kisliye mila wo pata nahi yeah i mean uh, i never uh, you know uh, thought it about you know you you uh, were in a space where you also had to give uh, awards to your competitors uh, uh, and and again i i'm i'm sure it can definitely be difficult to eliminate your cognitive biases in terms of you know uh, judging judging others i uh, how 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 did you build the team of judy i mean uh, was it was it uh, easy for you as you mentioned that you had a network of people who you know uh, where where you maybe hired and ma- made uh, you know uh, made a team out of them how how difficult was it for you to make a, make a nice jury like make an international jury i forgot to ask so, that question yeah so j- jury is all volunteers so i i still lecture uh, Uh, at many conferences around the world i i meet people i network we collect cards you know uh, and then you see juries uh, when you go to other juries you meet land up meeting other juries um, and and there are people i have known over the years in in india for example my generation before me after me lots of these people doing very good work uh, so we we don't really have a formula right now on how we get the jury but but they are mostly these connections and we ask them if we can uh, have them you know if, if they would be uh, they would like to be a jury so like we have uh, miko uh, who is the head of innovation at lowbro university uh, uk uh, i had met him he was in finland and i had met him in finland about 8 uh, years back Uh, and then we met in china once uh, so we became good uh, drinking friends and we were we were good friends and then he got in touch with me out of the blue saying oh you so we have shifted to uk and i'm doing this and i'm saying okay will you be a jury at my my this thing and he said of course i'll be there so it's like more and more it is like that but i also want to create a process that that probably 30% of our winners also become jury because a lot of them are senior and again people i don't know i need to expand into that uh, we have a lot of academicians coming uh, from various universities in india design schools we have lots and lots of design schools now uh, you know getting them to become a jury uh, at the same time not just relying on on their reputation as a professor because a lot of professors also don't know how to judge so so we we create uh, systems for them how do you look at a work how do you value the work when you should say yes when you should say no i i give lot of documentation to people um, i also do that to people who are coming to speak at the event how to speak which is our audience what is a good thing to speak about what is not good to speak about i i actually give lot of briefing on that uh, i also give briefing to people who come to get awards uh, you know why is it that you should dress up formally and come because it's occasion that your picture will be taken and floated around and all that i also give directions to people who come and attend the event so i i realize that you that there's nothing wrong in that you know you put it out and you then suddenly find that some people agree with that and you have a good uniformity coming and some people don't which is fine but in jury i need to set a process uh, ahead i've had in a, a formula in the sense i keep the like one person repeats in jury for 3 years okay so every year about 30% of my jury is new and rest of them have been a jury already so it it keeps on uh, moving and uh, fresh like that yeah i mean it's it's always great to have you know fresh perspective every you know once yeah. in a while otherwise i i think i mean uh, i mean as a young designer also i think it it can also become stagnant when you are you know uh, letting a certain eyes you know judge judge the work which is maybe ahead of their time or maybe their knowledge so yeah i mean it's a def- definitely a great space so uh, as you as you bid farewell to to the magazine what about the design awards you going to keep up with the with that so we will um, continue having the design india as a community we have a very good web presence we have uh, the magazines the same content is rolled over onto a website is design-india.com so uh, that community con- continues 
right? Um, we have a good healthy community group on on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on uh, Instagram, everywhere. So that continues. We do a lot of publications. So I am like uh, this year doing a um, yearbook called the Design India Yearbook 22-23. So my plan is there's no regular publication of that nature in, in India, which will have all the award winners work, which will have views of the jury and which will have some panel discussions which happen at the event. Plus I have invited, I gave you open call to articles on, on design and I got extremely good response on it. So there's certainly a lot of people saying, I want to write on this, I want to write on this. And they they are saying, so I'm saying send. So I'm putting a process in the back, uh, you know, getting a few people to review those articles and and then have that. Uh, so it, it's going to be a good, healthy mix of, if you just want to flip through pictures, there are the award pictures. Um, and if you want to really read cerebral stuff about design and future of design, there is that. So that publication will become our annual publication. I also plan to publish annuals of earlier uh, issues. So I plan to do uh, a 350, 400 page book and 12 of these books on 12 different, uh, I did three of them already. So I have to do uh, more of this. So this will be a full library of whole decade of, of design in India from various domains, uh, which I, I think are required in our libraries and schools and studios and uh, I would love to have it behind me saying Design India 1, Design India 2, you know, all of that. Like that's a lot of books coming up. Um, I do plan to get into special specialist publications. Um, in the sense, I, I want to take up a topic, for example, furniture design in today's time and, and then do a book on uh, a, a global book on furniture design. Uh, I want to do a book on on user experience. I want to do a book on uh, workspaces. I want to do a book on, on graphic trends, on typography. I mean, everything requires, right? So so the plan is to, because we already have a system um, uh, of content building, we will get this together, build books. And today you can do books which are not very large numbers. Okay. Plus you already read that I would be coming out with cafes. So I would need the some stock in my cafes to for people to browse through and buy back and take it with them. And and basically, I, I think India has lots and lots of talent. We have so many designers, so many design schools. Uh, we need to have a presence into this document documented uh, regimen also, right? We don't have enough films. We don't have enough uh, uh, books on design, on designers, celebrating all that. This is what the magazine was. But magazine, I, I now realize, is a short-lived thing. So you do the same thing into a larger format, into a book, nobody will ever throw it out. You never throw a hard, hard one book, right? Even if it is <laughs> uh, trash. I, I have so many books all, all around me. So, so books, yes, I will do lots of books now, lots of films. My plan is to do, like earlier, we were uh, taking interviews and things and publishing it. I plan to do that uh, in, in video format now um, and, and document a, a person's full um, explanation, feeling, emotions, journey, inspirations, and his work and his process. So spend a time with the designer and, and, and document that uh, in terms of video, click that, uh, clip that, and present that in, in all the design cafes and put that online. So. I'm very excited about the, the front. Actually, I've forgotten that I was publishing the magazine. The, the strength is the magazine. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, uh, pretty stoked to hear all, all about that, you know, uh, I, and I, I wish you all the best, uh, you know, uh, 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 going forward with the with, with your publishing. Uh, this uh, uh, moves us to our, uh, you know, move, moves us to the last question. I mean, what would be the, uh, you know, major takeaways or maybe the pointers you would like to say to new designers who are, you know, trying to uh, get out there, you know, trying to make an impact, uh, and also the, uh, you know, new design agencies like 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 ours. What 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 would be the main pointers and takeaways you think that you know sh sh should uh, like to uh, communicate? Yeah. So. So, so one one thing I I say to all designers and design students and to companies is um, understand the difference between art and design. Okay, we we have that clarity in your mind that you're not artists, you're designers. 
um, you'll be surprised the number of people who do not know the difference. Um, I'm not telling the difference right now. It's there somewhere on my one of my earlier uh, blogs. So, so that the moment you get that difference very clear, understand that that you're a professional. You're not just a designer. You're a professional designer. The moment you say you're a professional designer, don't be ashamed of making money. Okay, recognize this that as a professional, you have to exist as a business person, as a trading person, as as a person who needs to make a living by this profession. Why should you be ashamed of making money? Right. So never be ashamed of making money or making profit. So go and figure out how to make money. How you should ask your clients what kind of money other people are making. What you need to do to live happily and live more. Right. Without compromising on the quality of work. So I think that this is a myth that people think that if you are thinking of money, you can't be a good designer. Or uh, then people start thinking themselves that we are artists actually, they're not really designers. That's where the difference comes in. So my my first thing is, and I always said that is, survival is extremely important. Survival as a professional is extremely important. I will be very happy that you do trash work but you you make millions of rupees and you continue to be a designer rather than you give up design and and uh, start doing something else right so to 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 exist as a professional designer don't be ashamed of of making money the moment that that uh, that feeling goes you will have to learn how to make money right there you are just like any other profession all doctors, all engineers, everybody needs to learn how to make money. Designers also. There's nothing wrong in that. So my first thing is always survival. <clears throat> at, at the cost of survival, don't do anything. First, survival. Second is, of course, do good work. Okay? Do inspired work. How do you do good work? How do you get inspired work? There's not there's no rocket science for it. You know, keep looking at other people's work. Appreciate what somebody else is doing. And see, what if I had to do that, how would I do that? Okay, how would I, would I get that project? What that somebody else did that project, right? What I would have had to do to get that project? Maybe my website should be different. Maybe I should win a few awards. Maybe I should get written about a little. You need to recognize how architecture as a profession is working. And actually, we 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 can get there's a lot of learning into that. How fashion as a as a profession existing. Okay, the other designers need to do that. Most of the of the award-winning uh, uh, or well-to-do uh, design offices, architecture offices, have PR companies. They document their work. They they spread out their work. They 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 are regularly sending PR letters. I get uh, half of my inboxes full of the architecture companies saying, "Ye bed banaye, ye bed sheet banaye, ye interior banaye." I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Designers won't do that. Industrial designers won't do, do that, you know. Why not? I think it's a, it's a sign of healthy uh, professional uh, industry that that we start promoting ourselves as, as design and stop looking at somebody else who's promoting himself or herself as he is to gadbad kar hai. I think that person is doing very well for that, right? S- start learning from that. So my my first thing is that that design, of course, learn design, good design, inspired design. So no compromise on that thing, but learn the business as well. Don't shy away from the business of design. Learn that. Very important. Then, of course, be be a little mindful of how much time are you putting into doing the work, getting the work, you know, that you have enough free time to, to grow. You need to grow. As a, as a designer, you can't sit back and say, 40 years ago, I learned this about something. If I do that, I'm finished today. I have to learn something new every day. For that, I need to have time. I need to have bandwidth. What that means is 20% of your projects need to pay for 80% of your earnings. Right? Do less work. Do more earning. But do good work. I I think I I would say only only that much. There's not much to it. Um, but I, I I feel that we are still uh, a long time away to make this a profession, not just a hobby. Design should not be a hobby; it should be a profession. 
yeah uh, so we, i mean uh, a lot of uh, uh, amazing pointers and you know a lot of reality check uh, we we got uh, from this conversation and uh, i again uh, you know th- thanks a lot for coming on the podcast and you know share your wisdom uh, i hope to see you soon have a, have a great time very soon very soon thank you so much for having me it was a, it's actually when i when i get questions like this i start thinking uh, on the answers also so it's good i think we we need to continue having interactions and discussions and motivating people i think you're doing doing a great job with the podcast it's a very good idea to to get some kind of media out and make people listen to it very important thank you